So I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Niels Kortsey, who is Head of Product Management at Intelligent Growth Solutions. Neil's team are responsible for vertical farming systems being developed by IGS. These systems include a fully controlled environment, a fully controlled environment approach to growing food, which is independent to climatic effects such as flooding and droughts. Niels has a degree in computer science and nearly 20 years experience in international engineering and product leadership roles, which include aerospace, defense, energy and automation. Neil's presentation today will take you through IGS's Total Controlled Environment Agriculture Project, which they envisage working alongside more traditional methods, but putting control in the, in the hands of the grower. So I'd like to hand over to Niels. All right. Very good. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Charlie. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, today I'd like to, uh, to take you a little bit on, on a journey of, of vertical farming and and how vertical farming uh, can be integrated into, into the traditional agriculture. Um, and, and to just get going with that one, if I can find my mouse, always the case. Uh, yeah, there we are. Uh, if I think uh, already, uh, as alluded to in, in the introduction that Steve did uh, at the start of this conference, we, we've got a lot of food to, uh, to grow in the next 30 years. You know, the world population is growing uh, it's about 10 billion by 2050. And you know the, the, the number that always gets me is like, if, if you think about the amount of food we have to produce in the next 30 years, it's, it's more than the, the last 10,000 years combined. So that's, that's a massive amount, uh, an extra uh, amount that we have to produce every year going forward. But if you look at the amount of, um, of land today that's already been used by agriculture, that's about half of, of, of all the land we've got on this planet. And, and yet, apparently, there's, there's up to 39% of the Earth's surface that will, um, will suffer or will be exposed to, to new climates. So you, you see it you know, all across the globe. We see the impact of climate change. And um, so we need to really think about how we, how we grow food uh, in, in the future with, with that in mind. So, and it's, it's not as, you know, far away as, as people sometimes think it is even, even today, you know, if you look at what happened uh, over the last year, uh, looking at the empty shelves in the supermarkets, but also looking at, you know, some of the, the things, um, happening in, uh, you know, in, in different countries with, with the climate, you're looking, looking at a picture you see in the middle with, uh, in Italy where, you know, the river Po basically was no longer there. Uh, they had they had a drought period for for months and months and and effectively the the fresh water that all the agriculture needed was was gone uh, so it is something that we have to to take into account and on the other hand the you know the flooding you know can can kill the crops as well you see some examples here we don't have enough um you know crops being grown and and with the climate changing we really have to to think about you know what what can we do about this so one of the the the, the things that we uh, we believe in at, at igs uh, intelligent growth solutions that can that can help here is is uh, this thing called vertical farming and you know that's maybe new to you know a lot of uh, people in the audience here so just in in very basic terms what what it is is you just take a field you cut it up in uh, in trays of about you know a, a, a snooker table, and you stack them on, on top of each other you know, up to twelve meter high stacks, and then you place them indoors, and you create let's say the, the perfect summer's day uh, year round, and um, and you can control that environment digitally you know, using your computer or your tablet, um, and you know if you if you look at um, you know the 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 amount of cultivation area you get, you get about you know over 500 square meters of cultivation areas uh, area on about uh, 41 square meter uh, of of growing area, uh, or sorry footprint. So, uh, so why would you you know what would be the benefits of 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 vertical farming? Eh? So if you if you do that, you can you can control you know the weather. You know, that's something you can't do outdoors, and even in a greenhouse or a polytunnel. You, know, you can't control the lights. You, know, you can't control uh, temperature uh, that well. So, 
with with uh, vertical farming, you can basically grow high quality, nutritious, consistent produce year round. And at the same time, you know, you're, you don't need um, uh, a, a lot of water to go and do that. It's about you know ninety eight percent less water than open field farming. Um, it's also you know, allowing new uh, new crops to be developed uh, that allow you to have a longer shelf life uh, in the store and for consumers. So it's also about reducing the waste. Now, that's just as important as you know the production uh, of, of nutritious food is you know how can you how long can you keep it on the shelf or how long can you um, keep it fresh uh, after you've you've bought it. Uh, so. It, it, it really offers you security of year-round availability, irrespective of you know, of the weather uh, outdoors. Um, and at the same time, you don't need um, any pesticides or herbicides um, to uh, to keep the plants healthy. So, if you look at um, IGS, you know what what we do is you know we uh, our mission is you know, to deliver you know commercially viable vertical farming solutions. So we are not growers. Uh, we are technology providers. So yeah, we do R&D. You see on this picture, you see our um, crop research center in uh, in Dundee, in Scotland, uh, where you see uh, our technology uh, deployed and and um, our research going on. But that is really to uh, to develop new recipes for new crops um, that uh, that our customers, the growers, can then take, the farmers can take and and use. So we've been founded in in 2013, and you know, we we kind of brought together you know the the farming and, and engineering experience to create this uh, this vertical farming uh, uh, solution. And and our mission really is to make it to make it commercially viable uh, and improving the uh, by improving the productivity. So if, if you look at, uh, at at IG as an organization, there's a lots of different disciplines that you have to bring together to to do that. There's obviously the engineering, so you know the 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 hardware engineering of of the physical machine, uh, the software engineering for all the software controlling the machine, uh, but also you know the data science uh, to to monitor the machine and and to learn from you know what's going on inside it, what's what's happening to the plants inside the machine, what's happening to the machine itself. Uh, and and automating uh, a lot of the activity that's going on, but also you know uh, economics. You know, so um, you know what? How do you how do you manage this farm? How do you what are the production economics? You know what are the food and consumer economic here? Uh, and then also the crop science. So you know, think about the genetics of the plants, uh, the crop quality, the biotechnology, you know, leading to you know development of superior varieties for for horticulture uh, crops. Um, so if, if you look at what, what this machine looks like, we've, we've kind of have you know, a couple of variants of our, of our product. So these growth towers, as we call them, um, are you know, six, nine or 12 meter high, stack high um, uh, towers. And they consist of um, you know, a, an HVAC system that you can see here you know, with a patented uh, ventilation uh, system. But it's also... Um, uh, you know, it's it's also two racks of um, uh, of trays that you can see here with a lift in the middle uh, and a fully automated irrigation system. Uh, and so the whole growth within this machine is is fully automated. So you basically put the tray in the machine. Uh, the machine uh, lift takes it to the right uh, slots, um, and it it applies the right uh, lights, the right temperature, uh, the light, uh, the right irrigation schedule. Uh, the right uh, fertigation mix, and uh, you basically have uh, a fully automated growing uh, of of your crops. So it, it basically stays in there until it's ready to harvest. So it, you know, in, on this picture, you see you know a couple of these um, these towers. You know, there's 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 four of these towers in this in this particular um, uh, farm. But it's a modular design, so you can. We've got customers that only have two. We also have customers that are ordering uh, 200 of these and putting them together, growing a, a wide variety of crops. So we, we put these things in what we call a superstructure, uh, a single envelope flooding, uh, where you have a fully automated uh, total control environment agriculture system, as we call it, so the vertical farming um, technology in, in, in there with an airlock 
to uh, that is positively uh, pressurized to make sure that there's no um, uh, there's no uh, uh, contamination in, in inside that area. <clears throat> so you know if you if you look at how that process works, so you, you basically have you know your seeds. And you, there's there's um, you use commercial off off the shelf equipment to. Uh, to sow in, into standard, you know, Danish propagation trays or pots or whatever you prefer, uh, and and put them in our trays, and um, you you then load these trays into um, into the into the growth tower, and then um, basically every growth tray is is individually monitored, monitored watered, you know, has the lighting uh, completely uh, uh, altered based on you know what the plant uh, needs. So depending on what you're growing, you know there's the different recipes that we provide as part of the of the product offering, uh, where you can um, where you can control how uh, how the plants are grown uh, in in the growth tower. And once the, they're ready to harvest, uh, you can take them out um, and uh, use again commercial off the shelf equipment to to harvest and, and package uh, the the crops. So, so what, what you know, do you grow actually in, in this machine? Oops, so there's, there's two slides at once. Um, so there's the ability to grow seed to harvest. You know, like I just described, you know, very uh, popular is, is leafy greens and, and herbs in vertical farming. Um, you know, they, they require relatively little space and they have a, a short growing cycle. Uh, so that makes them very interesting to, to grow in here and, and you know, it's, it's economically viable to grow them very quickly because people always ask me, you know, what, what uh, do people grow in here? What can you grow? Well, um, basically you can grow, you know, almost everything in, inside uh, this machine, but you have to think about, you know, is it economically viable? Can I make money growing this crop in this machine? And that's where, you know, uh, the, the answer is always, you know, it depends, you know, it depends on, you know, what is your energy cost? What is your labor cost? You know, what is your uh, market pricing for your crops? Um, and uh, and that all determines you know what kind of crops are uh, commercially viable and and that's what we always say if you if you can't if you can't make money growing is you know don't plant the seeds uh, um, and and that's therefore key to to understand it depending on you know where you are you, know, you can you can pick the crop that you like to grow and uh, that you can make money on uh, and um, and that's why the system is also so flexible to allow you to to pick and also Weight crops. Uh, uh, typically, we can grow a, a lot faster uh, compared to traditional agriculture, uh, but we can also grow year round. So, if you compare it to a greenhouse, you know, um, during winter, you don't have enough light uh, to to grow in there. Um, so that's where you know a, a vertical farm can can give you that year round production um, of um, of seed to harvest crops. But it's not just the um, the seed to harvest. Uh, there's also a lot of our customers that use our technology to do the plant propagation. So as a, as a plant nursery, uh, for instance, to do uh, strawberry plants uh, or, or small tomato plants, but also three seedlings for reforestation uh, purposes. So we can, we can grow, for instance, broad leaves up to six times faster, you know, in, in our um, growth towers than, uh, than they are traditionally growing in, in a polytunnel uh, in their initial growth stage. So, so this this is typically you know referred to as kind of a, of a hybrid model where you grow, um, you do the pr plant propagation in our technology and then plant them out either in a polytunnel or a greenhouse or in open fields for the the second stage of of growth. Um, but the the benefits of um, of doing the, the initial growth stage in our technology is you know the reduced growth cycle that you get. Um, uh, Allowing you to uh, get get a lot less waste. You know, for instance, on, on the strawberries, talk to a strawberry grower. Um, he said, "Well, I'm I'm just sourcing my strawberry plants from uh, uh, yeah, from different locations because, you know, if there's a if there's a bad weather event, you know, there's no there's no supply of of new uh, uh, of new plants. And also, you know, when I when I order them, I have to put them in cold storage because I can only get them once a year. And so I." Um, but if I put them in cold storage and then plant them out when I need them, you know, I, I lose about ten percent of the uh, of the yields because you know that's the amount of energy they've they've wasted staying alive in cold storage. So if I don't need to 
you know, put them in cold storage, I can, I can uh, grow exactly, you know, the amount that I need uh, in your technology and, and get a higher yields and grow exactly the amount that I need. Um, so that, that, those are just examples of how um, the technology can be used to, to improve, uh, you know, uh, existing operations. So it, it's like I said, there's a there's a wide range of different uh, crops that can be grown. Uh, um, so the leafy, leafy greens and herbs, the, the, the starter plants, uh, but we're also um, uh, being the ability to to do small fruiting crops like like chilies. Um, we've we've been trialing uh, with chilies a lot, um, and and uh, uh, we, we've been able to get them to to fruit over and over again, you know, keeping them in, um, and and just develop novel ways of, uh, of producing uh, and, and getting higher yields out of, uh, out of the plants. So the way you know, we're, we're looking at, um, at, at vertical farming is not as something that will um, uh, replace something. You know, it's, not, it's not here to replace anything. It is here to integrate with traditional agriculture. I think that's really important to understand. You know, it allows you to you know, improve your existing operations like I for instance, just described around the, the strawberries, um, but it also um, allows you to diversify. Uh, and and if you if you think about you know the the, the climate changing and and about you know the new revenue streams that you're looking for as a farmer, you know vertical farming can can be integrated with with your existing operation and and just offer that. And as as there's such a wide variety, it's very flexible. Um, and what you want to grow, where you want to grow it, and um, and you can switch. You know, if market conditions change um, and and crop prices change, uh, you 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 want the ability to switch. Uh, uh, that's that's the key thing we've seen in greenhouse industries as well. That if you um, in the Netherlands, for instance, a lot of them have have uh, shut down because they were monocropping, and uh, the energy price went up, and suddenly. You know that was no longer commercially viable, and and if you have you know twenty hectares of of greenhouse and you're growing one crop, you know they can go really quick. And you're you're running out of business. So you want to have that flexibility to switch and and switch to a different crop as well. And that's what what our technology is is designed for. You know integration, uh, not being a silver bullet, but just a mix and a match of different methods and and technologies. So you know, just just to quickly summarize, uh, we see the climate change is is uh, is happening, and it and and I just explained the needs to to develop you know novel ways to grow sufficient food going forward, and and vertical farming you know uh, offers a hybrid approach you know, that to to integrate with traditional agriculture, and we we truly believe that it can help growers and farmers you know, both to to feed people and to make a, a profit. So, so that's all. That's my uh, presentation. Okay, thank you for that, Nils. Really interesting stuff. Um, there are a number of questions, and we've got uh, ten minutes before we break for lunch. Uh, so, the first question is from Jonathan Lodge, uh, who's basically picking up on uh, the efficiency and costs to grow food vertically. Um, and there's a statement there about uh, how can it be sustainable to make losses of in excess of 10,000 per day at a time when many are saying food is already too expensive. So, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure what, um, what is meant with that. So, so total control environment, so the total CEA uh, um, element is, is, is about you know, the total control of the environment. So controlling the weather let's say that's what that statement is is referring to and of course you know it, it is about uh, um, your sustainable uh, food production you know, the um, you know the, the the thing that it needs is, is energy it needs electricity a vertical farm so yes you need to have um, the the electricity produced in a, in a sustainable manner and so if you're just uh, using let's, let's say energy uh, produced by a, by a coal factory, yeah, that's that's not efficient. So it needs to be uh, green energy for sure. Uh, um, but if you think about, I'm not, I'm not sure what you meant with the you know the 10 k a day uh, loss. Um, I'm I'm not sure what uh, what's meant with that. So it, it needs to be sustainable in in a way of is that meant as a economically viable uh, statement? 
because of course, you know, if you can't make money, you know, growing a certain crops, then it's not sustainable. Uh, it's not a, not a viable business model. So, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe Jonathan can can elaborate a little bit further on on the question. We can, or or we could pick it up in the in the panel discussion. It's probably yes. Yeah. And I think I think it's really around the economics of it. And I suppose that you were liking that to farming. And farming has has been. Uh, happening for hundreds and hundreds of years with nobody making any money out of it but then again i've never met, never met a poor farmer yet um another an interesting question from jane rickson uh, she says your second slide implies that you take field soil as the substrate for growing the crops if that's the case what happens to the six meter squared areas where the topsoil is stripped or excavated or are you suggesting another growing medium yeah, so maybe you know it's it's the growing medium is up to you know up to the grower. Uh, we we would typically not use uh, you know the, the salt that you use in in uh, traditional uh, open field farming. Uh, so we, you should really compare it more to what what is used in in greenhouses. Uh, but we've got um, you know we use choir a lot, but there's also customers that we have in the US, for instance, using uh, peat. Uh, but it's really up to up to the grower. You know, it's a it's a hydroponic system. Uh, you can you can pick what substrate you want to use. Uh, it it really has that flexibility of of using different substrates that you that you like. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, I jumped over Mike Whiting's question. Um, who raised the point about many offices as offices in major cities being vacated, um, and is there any traction there to develop buildings into vertical farms? Yeah, that's definitely something that uh, that we see interest in, uh, and you know that is that is uh, that is possible. You, know, you can retrofit um, a a vertical farm in an existing building. Um, that's that's actually a really good way of doing it uh, to to retrofit uh, in in an existing one. We've we've had customers that are just using existing warehouses uh, and putting it putting the the technology in a warehouse. Um, so yes, that is definitely feasible. I've also been discussing with with architects, just uh, architects that were you know, designing you know, new new cities and and new buildings where they would design in a vertical farm um, in within the building uh, to have the local food production. Okay, um, Alistair Tullock picks up on about uh, you know is there any potential for cereals uh, where the margins are much less? Obviously, vertical farming tends to focus on high value crops, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, that, that is true, and so it, you know, I've seen I've seen uh, uh, posts about you know vertical farms, uh, you know, showing cereals. Uh, you know, honestly, it makes me laugh a little bit because uh, yes, you can grow it, but um, you will never make money with it. You know, that's that's just that's just the thing. You need to put a lot of energy in uh, to grow cereals, and it's actually a very uh, a very cheap. Uh, crop, you know, uh, so the market price is, is such that you know that's not commercially viable. Uh, what we what we do see is that you know the the type of crops that you can grow commercially viable are different in, in every region. So the Middle East, you know, is a very different market than the UK or you know Australia, and they all have their you know different different problems that they want to uh, that they have to solve. You know, is, is it a lack of water? Is it actually food security like the Middle East? Um, one of the one of the prospects I was talking to said, "Well, actually, you know, if we if we are in war with one of our neighbor countries, we we have no food. Uh, so, and actually, you know, it's likely that's going to happen at some point. So, you know, so you know, they they have a a much more, more appetite to pay more uh, to have the have the food security. Uh, so it really depends on you know where you grow, what you grow." Um, and yeah, you have to really think about it. You know, if you if you consider uh, using this technology, you know, think about uh, what is the crop that I can sell. What is the what is the, the the sales price, and then what is the production cost, and is this commercially viable? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, a question from Steve Parkin about the soil in the trays, and is is there an opportunity to recycle that that soil, that growing medium? Yeah. It, it uh, yes, you know it, it, it again. It depends on what you use, um, and uh, some of the substrates are definitely uh, recyclable, whereas others are not. Uh, we've got also uh, a customer that has a, uh, uh, a a novel substrate, you know, where they have 
a completely sustainable way of reusing the substrate and, and basically have no waste at, at the end of it. So they, they completely 100% reuse uh, uh, the, the substrates. So yes, it, it depends on what you what you use and uh, and how you use it. Okay, uh, then the last probably time for one more question, which is which is from me. Um, so I did some funding request reviews recently for the Royal Academy of Engineering on projects for Africa, and one of the project was a um, small containerized vertical farms built into shipping crates. Um, as a provide a, a means to sort of grow food in remote arid areas where hunger is a major issue, and these things are solar powered and add very minimal water. Have you heard of any of those sort of projects, offshoots of vertical farms, in sort of circles you mix in? I thought it was a really interesting project, to be honest. Yeah, it, it is something that uh, that I think you know we'll, we'll see more and more uh, of, and I think it is uh, something that that can really work. Um, and yeah, it's, I think it's just a matter of time.